Hello everybody, it is me, Anthony Coach, and here it is, part number three of my Crash Horse in the Blues. First things first, if you have not watched part one and part two and you are completely new to the idea of blues, then go back, go back and watch parts number one and two. And also subscribe, subscribe for more of this stuff because this is only part three and depending on when you're watching this, you might miss out on part four and maybe part five if I can be bothered making five. Uh, but anyway, where are we up to? Right, so where we left off, we've got the 12 bar blues chord progression. I'm just gonna very quickly play it. I'm not gonna go into detail. That was all covered in lessons one and two. <laughs> That was it without all the uh, chord substitutions which was covered in lesson two. Hopefully you've been practicing and you've been using my videos and, and other stuff that's available online and now you're ready to tackle every blues guitar player's favorite thing to do which is lead playing. Blues, okay, yeah, blues is heavily improvised, isn't it? We play something that is very formulaic in that we use chords one, four and five again now, I'll explain in, in lesson two, and it's very structured. It, the, lyrically, it's often very structured. Uh, harmonically, that's to say chords, it's very, very structured and predictable. So the creativity in blues comes from the lead playing, the improvised sections, the parts where we as musicians really get to express ourselves. So what I'm gonna do to you now, I'm assuming that you've never tried it before. Uh, I'm gonna give you an easy way to start improvising. And it starts off with this. This is the fancy name for this. Well, the only name for this is the minor pentatonic scale. It sounds a bit out there, um, but all there is to it is memorizing one little shape. And if you've memorized chords in the past, then this is just the same. It's the same idea. You just memorize a, a scale shape. So if you follow, follow, if you follow the tab, uh, it's not even tab, it's a scale box. Blah, blah, blah. If you follow the scale diagram and my demonstration of the notes therein, then uh, follow a few tips that I'm going to show after that and a few demonstrations, then you're going to be well on your way to starting your own improvisations. Right, so let's go back to the scale diagram. What's happening? I'm playing string number five. Always number strings from the one nearest to the floor. The. So that makes that string five. Then, with your third finger, play fret three on the fifth string. Okay, so now we've got zero, three. What follows is a pattern, okay, of fret zero, two, zero, two. Oh, I'm popular, I've just got a text. Uh, it's not, it's a reminder. No one texts me. Uh, the next one. Next string, books the trend. We now have to play fret one. And then fret three. Then on the first string, so that would be, you know, nearest the floor, this is string number one. Play zero, three. So all that scale so far is zero, three, zero, two, zero, two, one, three, zero, three. Uh, here we go. And I've just tuned my guitar. Sorry for the lesson so far being a little bit out of tune. How unprofessional of me. Um, okay then. So what now? What now? Well, you learn it that way, then you learn it backwards. And you've got to, you've got to really know that inside and out. You've got to know it like the back of your hand. And only then can you even really start to attempt improvising. Which means that what I have to do now is that I have to assume that you've watched this, you've uh, memorized it, maybe you've paused the video, maybe you've watched this video more than once. Hopefully you have. Uh, why wouldn't you? Why, why are you not? Why are you not watching my videos more than once? No, so yeah, whatever. I'm gonna now assume that you know that. You know that, you've, you've memorized that, just like you did 
that very first chord you did when you picked up a guitar. It has to be that ingrained in your mind so that your fingers just know exactly what they're doing. Look at the, some of the greatest blues players, they don't look like they're trying to remember what they're playing as they play it, they just know it's, it's in there. You have to, you have to really, really memorise these things. Okay then, well, let's move on. What I need to do is I need to, um, oh, I need to assume, it's, 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 when I'm doing videos like this, I can't talk to a person direct, so I need to assume a lot. I need to assume now that, oh, that is a text. <laughs> I do have friends. It's from R2. <laughs> no friends. So I need to assume that you've done one of two things, that you've either practiced the stuff that I showed you in lesson one and two, no, that's low battery. Okay. <laughs> My phone's taunting me for not having any friends. I need to assume that you've done one of two things. I need to assume that you've either recorded yourself playing the chord progression that I showed you in lesson one and two, or that you've got friends and that you've, uh, that you've practiced with people that you know and they know the chord progression. Or a third thing is that you found a backing track online. I've got backing tracks on my channel, so make sure you check those out. But there's loads on YouTube, just put in blues backing track in A. And a billion times out of, out of 10, it's gonna be suitable for a minor pentatonic scale. Just make sure it's in A. So we've got this scale. Word, how do we turn that into music? Well, let's give it a go. So I've prepared a track. It's a bass guitar and some drums, a nice little drum beat. And over the top of those, all I'm gonna do is just play the scale up and down. And hopefully, as I do, I hope that you can hear that it turns these jumble, this ladder of notes, ba da da ba 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 into more musical sounding musicaliness. Uh, let's give it a go. I'm gonna, gonna make some music happen and let's give it a go. Did you hear it? Did you hear that that was, it was almost music, wasn't it? All I was doing was going up and down the scale. And it occurred to me there that that's quite a fast tempo for someone who's just learned a scale. Uh, that's why you need to really consider that first point I made, that you need to be really on the ball with these scales, not just memorised, but to know that you, you can rely on yourself to play it at, at any tempo from slow to mid-tempo to fast. So find those backing tracks on YouTube, get your friends together, play a blues, and just go up and down the scale. That is the first step. You start to assort, your fingers start to associate with sounds um, because there's a weird thing that happens over time is that you you want to make the music that's in your head. That's only possible when you can anticipate what noise you're gonna make. So a lot of the work is just going up and down that scale and just and just getting to the point where you're, you're confident that you know what the guitar is going to sound like before you pick. It's like knowing what word you want to say before you say it. I'm going to show you another quick demonstration now. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix the notes up willy-nilly. And the plan there is going to show you that now we can mess around with the order of notes. It's, it's going to sound more musical because melody isn't just going up and down scales. It's creating phrases and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to mix the notes up. There's no science to it. Okay. Not the most inspired solo that I've ever played, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna go back and, and re-record it and make it sound cool because that is probably what it's gonna sound like when someone's learning a scale and then just jumbling those notes up. And that is quite a big step to to reach, to again just be super confident with that scale so that you you can do that. You know you don't lose your way in those notes. So what next? Well, repetition. Imagine you're having a conversation with someone and you really want to drive something home. You want to sound, you want to, you want to be definite in what you're telling someone. So you repeat the point. 
you repeat the point. Like I just did just then without even realizing it. You do the same on guitar. You play something, you noodle, it's called noodling. Um, you noodle around over your backing track or with your friends or over that recording of yourself playing the, the, the 12 bar blues chord progression. What's gonna happen in real time, you know, we're not talking you stop and then think about it. In real time, that's to say when you're actually playing, in the moment playing, you're gonna play something and you're gonna go, oh, that was good, that was good. I'm gonna play that again. And then I'm gonna play it again. And then I might play it again, but I might change it. And it's just, it, that, that's where you take a theme and, and go with it. Don't be afraid of repeating yourself. Let's chuck that in there and see what it sounds like. Repetition, here we go. <laughs> Does it get more simple than that? No. Does it get more effective than that? Not really. That's me just playing ba -na -na. Then again, ba -na -na. It, it just sounds confident. Again, I didn't add any articulation, which is all the fancy bends and slides and stuff. So it didn't sound too much like what your favorite guitarists and your favorite blues guitarists would play. Um, but it sounded Right, the notes sounded good. They sounded good over those chords. I sounded like I wanted you to, to know that I felt confident in playing ba -na -na, ba -na -na. and then I think I did a variation and then at the end I took the melody up and then I just ended on the ba -na -na. So already there's a theme over the 12 bars. I took something, I didn't sound any more like I was just noodling through the scale. I found something and stuck with it. But let's go back to that, that thing I just said there with articulation. This is the, really the final thing that needs to be added. Once you're confident with the, playing the 12 bar blues chord progression from video one and two, uh, playing the minor pentatonic scale, as shown earlier, uh, being able to play it up and down without even thinking about it, playing the notes of the minor pentatonic scale to a beat, to a backing track, to your friend, to a drummer, because drummers aren't your friends, I don't know. <laughs> to your drummer, who is also your, your friend. Then jumbling the notes up, then that repetition, the final step that you need to add is the fancy stuff, the articulation. Bends, vibrato, uh, slides, uh, slides up to the note, uh, hammer-ons, pull-offs, trills, the things that your favorite guitar players do just um what's the word i'm looking for they uh, <laughs> don't know can't remember the word i'm thinking of it's easier for me to just demonstrate it to you so let me do that i'm just going to do all the things above bit of repetition bit of mixing the notes around and uh a lot of articulation to just make the make the instrument unique you can't do that on a piano. So you better do it on your guitar. Here we go, articulation. Sounded okay. Uh, <laughs> it's tough to play in that open position. You'll get used to playing in other positions and then going back to that open position is actually quite tricky. Uh, that's my defense and I'm sticking to it. Okay, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. There is gonna be a fourth video in the series, so you know what to do. You gotta press that subscribe button with your finger on your mouse or your thumb on your phone or your nose or your elbow. I don't care, as long as you press it. It just makes me feel good when you do. <laughs> so I hope you've learned something. I have, I definitely have. I've learned that I love teaching you how to play guitar, so subscribe to my channel for more lessons, and I will see you in the next video. More musical sounding musicaliness.